This is going to be an introductory look at the integration of the 3D Experience platform and SOLIDWORKS. Inside of SOLIDWORKS, we'll find an add-in for the platform called PLM Services. This allows us to interact with the platform and the contents of the platform from inside the application. In this case, I'm going to go into my bookmark for Project 2. Bookmarks are the term for the functionality we use to organize our files on the platform. In this case, I'm going to open up this carriage assembly. Now, you'll notice that the add-in for the platform looks very similar to the component tree inside of SOLIDWORKS. These are nearly synonymous and selecting on components inside of the user area will highlight these inside of the platform add-in, allowing us to reserve or unreserve components, make revisions, etc. For this, what I need to do is add a component to this. I, for whatever reason, we've released this and we realize we need to add some branding to it. It's not clear that my company makes this. So what we need to do is first reserve the component or lock it so that we can make changes to this assembly. We've already done it for this assembly, but we'll walk through it for reserving the carriage. Any component can be reserved, assuming you have rights in its current maturity state. All of our components are in work currently, which means that any of them can be reserved. When you reserve it, it locks it so other people don't have access to make changes, while you have exclusive rights to make changes. Once you've completed any kind of work, you can save it and unreserve it. Next, we need to build our component. Instead of etching into the carriage, I'm actually going to add a component to this. Maybe this would be epoxied or, or attached in some way. So let's go about making that new component. You're going to make a new part in SOLIDWORKS just like you always have. And to save some time, I already created a block for this. This is what my logo looks like. This is what I want to add to my assembly. So I'm going to save it. Now the 3D Experience platform will actually create a local file location on your machine under your C drive. It'll be labeled 3D Experience. And inside of that, you'll have a My Work directory. This is where your components are saved. And this is actually where the file was downloaded onto my machine when I opened it. Um, I'm going to overwrite this logo file in here. Uh, this file hasn't been saved to the platform. If you hover over this icon, it will inform you that of this. So it's safe for me to just overwrite. Now that I've overridden it, I can add it to my assembly. So let's step back over to our assembly and insert this new component. Now I can save my assembly. Now you'll see here that we have this icon here informing us that it hasn't been saved on the platform. You can also denote that or kind of extract that from the fact that we don't have the ability to lock it. There's no revision or state. Basically, it hasn't been pushed to the server yet. So what we can do is select the server and choose save. It's going to select the two components that are reserved or in this case not added yet, and I can choose to release it after my save. When I press save, my information will be pushed to the platform, and my files will be unreserved, allowing other users to make changes to this document. Now let's jump over to the platform and see what this looks like inside of the 3D Experience platform. The 3D Experience platform is driven by applications. These applications can be organized into dashboards that make sense for what you're trying to do. In this case, I have some applications that make sense. Collaborative Lifecycle, 3D Play, the Bookmark Editor, and the Product Structure Explorer. What I'm going to start by doing is navigating into my project. I'm going to drag this into 3D Play. 3D Play is a viewing application, so I can get an idea of what my product looks like. 
CAD files can be dropped in here um, to identify what they are easily on inside, inside the cloud. Secondly is collaborative lifecycle. This is uh, my workflow states inside of the platform, in work, frozen, and released, and then eventually obsolescence. Assuming I have writes, I could push it to frozen for review, and then of course released. Once the file has been released, you'll notice there's no path back to in work. That is when we'd have to create a new revision, which can be created inside this or created inside of SolidWorks. And lastly is the product structure explorer. This allows me to identify the um, product structure inside of the cloud. This isn't a comprehensive bill of materials. As of right now, the role to view the bill of materials is still in work, but this will give you an idea of the structure and the components that make up any assembly. And you can drop these in again to 3D Play or to search to find these um, and interact uh, dragging and dropping between windows. If you'd like to preview files in a more meaningful way or interact with applications on a larger scale, you can expand them to fill the entire browser window. Hope this has helped kind of shed some light on what the functionality of the 3D Experience platform looks like inside of SOLIDWORKS. Thank you.